Uh, joining us once again on the programme, the Armed Forces Minister, James Heapy. Minister, great to see you again. Um, I, I wonder if we could start pretty quickly with the uh, security situation in and around uh, Kabul International Airport. The advice has changed. At a time when we know the flights are numbered, there are a finite number of them left, people are being advised to steer clear of the airport. Uh, why is that? Uh, intelligence over the course of the week has um, become ever more certain around the uh, highly credible, uh, imminent, uh, lethal attack onto uh, the airport or the handling centres being used by uh, Western forces. And in all good conscience, um, whilst, of course, the clock is still ticking towards the end of the month, we had to share that very, very real threat with people in Kabul and advise them that uh, they should move away from the airport, not come to the airport. Uh, and I'm aware that that causes real desperation for many of the people who are yet to be brought out of the country. But we're not being overly cautious. The threat, whilst I can't give you the detail, is very imminent, very credible, very lethal. Can I just then, uh, I, again, I completely understand your point about not being able to go into the specifics of the intelligence, where it has come from and all the rest of it, but just to, to pick up on your words there, imminent and critical. I mean, is, is there an expectation that we could, within a matter of hours, see an attack on the airport? Yes. And uh, on that basis, I, I wonder then what can possibly be done? Are, are, are we then limiting ourselves to those who have already been given permission to get on a plane? Are we... Essentially, how many more flights do we think we can get out in a situation like that? Well, I mean, we still have 11 flights programmed to leave in the next 24 hours. Um, our intention was to continue processing people um, today through the EHC. Um, in reality, we have to share the advice that we've given. Um, but you'll see on your own TV screens that there are thousands of people that have um, ignored that advice. And... I suppose their logic is, is that they're already fearful of their lives, um, so, you know, they've chosen to stay. That's, that's not what we would advise them to do. I think it's right that we've told them that the intelligence is so credible now and so imminent that, that we think they should move away. But we're doing our best to keep those that have um, not left safe. Uh, we're doing our best to look at what other alternative provisions we might be able to make, but obviously we won't be advertising those because that would simply make the alternative routes uh, a target in themselves. Um, Islamic State in the Khorasan province is, is, uh, is acutely aware of the fact that there is a closing window for people to leave. That is concentrating people uh, in towards the airport, and that is giving them an opportunity to do something that they would regard as spectacular, um, we would regard as absolutely abhorrent. Um, but it means we have to be very clear with people what the risks are, and we're doing our best to mitigate them, but it's not, we don't have the number of troops on the ground that we would need to be able to go off into the city, find the threat and remove it. Um, and that means therefore we have to try to operate within the threat envelope as it is and do our best to get as many people out as we can in the time that remains. Um, I wonder then if you, you, you will probably be aware of the, the situation regarding at least one uh, British national. Pen Farthing has been something of a thorn in the MOD side over the past couple of days, but he has been tweeting that he is near to the airport with uh, his Afghan staff. The Taliban are not letting him through. He is a British national. Is there any argument for putting British troops outside of the wire to try and get him uh, and potentially even his staff to safety? So for, for him, uh, I mean, I, I, it, it is uh, a, a grim reality of these situations that uh, as a British national, we would seek to expedite his passage into the airport. But he commendably has um, said that that's not what he wants to do. He wants to bring his staff and his animals in with them. Um, he's asking us, the Americans, the Taliban for safe passage. But Niall, I'm afraid as difficult as it is to say, safe passage is also, in other words, for being brought to the front of the queue. And um, I just wonder how you feel, how your viewers feel, um, I know how I feel, about having to make a decision whereby we move lots of desperate Afghans out of the way to bring him through because of the, the, the profile and the support that he has. That, that, that doesn't feel like the right thing to do. Um, it gives me no pleasure to say that, though. 
if if Mr Farthing's security situation changes, and again, I think people will understand perhaps the position that you find yourself in, but 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 should he have taken the opportunity some days ago, perhaps to to get out on a plane when when it was there? Are you you yourself said it, the commendable decision to remain with his staff till the end. But looking at what's happening in and around the airport, given the security concerns that you have about ISIS K, I mean that, that could be a pretty grim conclusion. Look, he was offered a flight at the back end of last week. I personally um, would have wanted to see him on it because we've got British troops in danger in order to facilitate the evacuation of British nationals and those under the Arab scheme. My Secretary of State, Ben Wallace, um, and the Foreign Office have worked very quickly to get his staff cleared uh, in order to be part of the leave outside the rules um, visa system, and therefore they are cleared for travel to the United Kingdom. Um, and that is, you know, that, that, that is now in place. But the reality is that I, I, I just don't think that we can move other desperate Afghans out of the way to bring him and his staff to the front of the queue. And I, I get it. I, I served as well. And I know that Penn will be applying that soldier's code of never leaving your battle buddies behind. And that's how he will regard his staff. Um, I, I wouldn't want to be in his situation. I can see all of the emotion in everything that he is saying. Um, but we, we are in a similarly challenging situation. We, we've done everything we can to facilitate his staff coming here. Uh, we know that he has an aircraft uh, from a Polish operator that he is in discussions with. Um, we will seek to facilitate that getting a landing slot through the Combined Air Operations Center at Al Udeed, which in, in, in Qatar, which is a, a US uh, military uh, facility. But the one thing that we cannot do is move all of the other Afghans out of the way to let his Afghans to the front of the queue. Um, um, and that, I'm afraid, is a hard reality. I, I did just want to have a couple of uh, questions away from the situation in and around um, uh, in and around the, the airport itself. Um, just in terms of this group, ISIS K, it is not prescribed here in the United Kingdom. Are there any concerns then that people who may be affiliated with the group, who may be members of the group, could have somehow made their way uh, through the British uh, via the British Air Bridge, you know, back to the United Kingdom or to any of the other places that we've been uh, taking uh, refugees? Well, D Daesh is prescribed, and these are just, uh, you know, these are affiliates of Daesh around the world. Um, you know, people have um, pinged on the uh, on the no-fly list as they've been coming through checks at the evacuation handling centre at the Baron Hotel. That, I think, validates the requirement for those checks. And I know that, you know, there are plenty of people who would say, well, look, you know, in, in, given the threat of the... Uh, that we're talking about this morning and its imminence. Why don't we just open the gates and let people through uh, onto the tarmac and get them all on planes as best we can in the time that remains? But you know, there's 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 nothing to say that IS haven't preempted that and haven't got people in the crowd who who are hoping to be able to sneak through and access mainland United States or the UK or somewhere else in Western Europe in order to mount an attack. So we have to maintain the checks that we're doing because that is the UK's front door right now. And as desperate as the scenes are that you see on TV, there are some really abhorrent people who are trying to take advantage of those, those conditions in order to gain access to the US, the UK, or some of our allies. And... Um, that's the that's the impossibility of the situation within which Indeed. our troops are, are operating. Um, Minister, we're, we're learning via the Associated Press news agency that the French government has said that after Friday evening they will no longer be able to be getting people out of the out of the country. I know from a conversation earlier in the week you do not want to be very specific, but is that in the rough ballpark of where you're anticipating uh, flights um, back to the United Kingdom, back to British bases to end? So our judgment is that we shouldn't um, advertise the end of the evacuation flights. That's for two reasons. Firstly, that I think actually they, they sort of taper. We can be bringing out some of the, uh, the military and particularly military kit while still bringing out people. Um, but secondly, my words, the words of my colleagues in government on your show and other uh, media outlets in the UK has a direct consequence in Kabul in terms of the crowds that gather and the desperation within those those crowds. That's why it's important to communicate the threat because people in Kabul will be aware of what the government is saying this morning. 
But equally, if we were to advertise when the last flights will be, there is a real danger that that causes a panic that could cause, like we saw last Saturday and was so brilliantly reported by your correspondent on the ground, Stuart Ramsey, some truly horrific scenes where people in their desperation uh, cause a crush that could take life. We have to be responsible in the way that we communicate what remains of our plan. And then once the military withdrawal is fully underway, we need to um, not offer any commentary at all on that, because as you would imagine, as each flight leaves, fewer troops remain to secure uh, the ground thereafter, and they are therefore ever more at risk as you build up to that moment when the last flight leaves. So I'm afraid the Ministry of Defence needs to be um, slightly uh, responsible to our troops and to those outside in, 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 in not necessarily sharing all the detail that you would want, and I apologise for that. No, we understand it. Uh, Mr Heapy, thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time.